Chapter 4, Section 3, Project Scripting with Tickle Commands. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing some usage guidelines and tips for creating Tickle scripts for use in Propel Builder. After that, we'll check out an example script I put together to get a better idea for some of the things that you can do with Propel Builder's various Tickle commands. So with that, let's dive into the first portion of this video, where we'll discuss some basics regarding Propel Builder's different Tickle commands. So the first point that I want to make is that many of the actions and selections that you make while using Propel Builder all have equivalent tickle commands that are executed whenever you do something. If you've ever taken a look at Propel Builder's interactive tickle console as you develop your own projects, you may have noticed that there are some tickle commands being echoed to the tickle console as you do various things. Aside from that, the tickle console can also be used to manually execute tickle commands as well, and is actually the main way that we'll invoke our own custom tickle scripts in Propel Builder. With that said, you're probably wondering what are some of the possible things that you can script in Propel Builder. Although it's difficult to name every possible use for Propel Builder's tickle commands, some of the most important things that you can automate with tickle commands include generating, opening, deleting, and closing projects, instantiating IP and modifying parameters, creating ports and connecting components, managing address spaces, as well as generating the required files for use in Propel SDK and either Diamond or Radiant. Now that we've discussed some basic information regarding Propel Builder's tickle commands, let's quickly review some usage guidelines and tips that you should know before creating your own tickle scripts. The first tip that you should know when developing your own tickle scripts is that all of Propel Builder's tickle commands have additional help information that can be accessed directly from Propel's interactive tickle console. This information is pretty useful for developing your own scripts, as it highlights the correct syntax for each command, as well as its main use. With that said, you can access the short, concise version for help information of a command by typing dash h after the name of a command, or dash help in order to be the longer, more detailed help information for that command. Aside from that, the second tip that you should know is that the order that you list ports in when connecting components using tickle commands is important. For example, when connecting regular ports using tickle commands, you must first list the source input port, followed by any output ports that you want to make a connection to. This requirement is the same for connecting interfaces using tickle commands, as you must first list the source controller interface, followed by any target interfaces that you want to make a connection to. Another useful thing to know about connecting components using tickle commands is that you can make multiple connections simultaneously using a single tickle command by listing multiple output or target ports that you want to make a connection to. Next, the third tip that you should know is that instantiating an IP in your design requires a source component. What this means is that although you can modify some parameters for a component, you cannot generate a new component from scratch and must have an already existing component in order to instantiate it in your project. The fourth tip that you should know to develop your own tickle scripts is that when you modify component parameters using tickle commands, your inputs are case, value, and value type sensitive. To help ensure that your tickle script uses the correct syntax and inputs for your commands, you can use the SPP report properties tickle command in order to check out and compare the correct syntax for each of the parameters in a component. Finally, the last step that you should know to develop your own tickle scripts is that you should use quotation marks in your commands if you want to use environment variables. From the example on the slide, you can see that the correct syntax would be project underscore name in quotes instead of the second option in brackets. Now that we've reviewed some basic usage guidelines and tips for tickle scripting in Propel Builder, let's return back to my desktop view so we can take a look at an example tickle script I put together that is used to recreate an archive project from a minimal set of files. So before we take a look at the contents of this example script, I first want to point out the first line that I commented out that says source followed by the location of this script. To simplify the process for invoking this script in Propel Builder, I used this commented out command in order to simply copy it over and easily invoke the script in Propel Builder later on without having to type out the command each time I want to reinvoke my script. With that said, the main point I want to highlight about this script is that it is broken into several different subsections, each corresponding to a different part of the Propel Builder project development flow that is scriptable. If we take a look at the beginning of the script, we can see that I use some basic tickle commands in order to define some environment variables for use in my script as well as to create the directory for my new project. Aside from that, 
The svp underscore design new command is used to create the actual Propel Builder project. Below that are the commands we use to add the components and ports for our design. One thing I want to point out here is that we are simply instantiating these components in our project using the existing source components that we copied from a different directory earlier on in our script. Aside from adding components and ports, at the very bottom of this section of the script, we can also see that we use the svp add glue logic command in order to implement some combinational logic in our design. The second to last section of our script is also pretty simple and only uses two different tickle commands. The svp underscore connect underscore net tickle command is used to connect all of the default input, output, and in out ports in our project, while the svp underscore connect underscore interface underscore net command are used to efficiently connect the unconnected interface connections in our project. Finally, in the last section of our script, we use a few different tickle commands to finish the project generation process. The auto assign addresses option of the spp design command is used to automatically assign the unassigned address spaces in our project to ensure there is no overlap or issues with our memory space. Something I want to quickly point out here is that you can also manually set the address ranges in your project using tickle commands and that you are not limited to only using auto assign to make sure that there are no overlap. Finally, the last few commands are used to generate the Verilog wrapper file for our project, then save our project, then generate the required files for use in Propel SDK, and lastly, I'll put a simple string that tells us that the script is finished invoking. Now that we reviewed the structure for this script, let's head over to Propel Builder so that we can execute it and view the results. In order to invoke our tickle script, we first need to type source, followed by the location of our tickle script into Propel Builder's tickle console. As mentioned before, I commented out this command at the top of my script, so I could easily copy paste it here to invoke it without having to retype the entire command by hand. With that said, let's hit enter to invoke our script. Now that our script is finished executing, we can see that the project generation has completed message in the tickle console, confirming that our script has finished executing successfully. Now, if we zoom relay out to fit our entire SOC into schematic view, we can also see that our new project was created successfully using a minimal set of files from a previous project. That concludes the last and final section of the Propel Builder introductory video training series. For more Lattice related videos and training resources, check out our official Lattice Semiconductor YouTube channel or our webpage at www.latticesemi.com.